Welcome to Intuitive Transformations with your host, Sylvia Henderson, and discover tools, wisdom, and inspiration that will empower you to transform your life. Sylvia is an intuitive life coach and energy healer with a growing practice that is focused on empowering others to be more of who they want to be. For the next hour, join Sylvia and explore and unravel anything in the way of you creating the life that you would love to live on the OM Times Radio Network. Times Radio FM, the voice of consciousness. I'm Sylvia Henderson, your host, and I'm an intuitive and an energy healer. And if you would like to learn more about me and the work that I do, you can visit my website at intuitive transformations. Dot net. And if you caught my last two shows, then you already know that something very exciting is happening on Thursday, May 26. Belinda Womack and myself have partnered up and together we are co-hosting a free 75-minute interactive group healing called Awaken Your Inner Alchemist. And this is designed to awaken the magical alchemist within you. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Belinda Womack, she is a beautiful healer of the inner child, a clear channel, and the author of Lessons from the Twelve Archangels. Belinda and I both were given the title, Awaken Your Inner Alchemist, and we believe it's because the story of the alchemist is one of turning lead into gold. And if you know of this story, then you also know that men have traveled around the globe for centuries searching for the secret to this alchemical process without realizing that the secret they sought was actually encoded within them. So during this interactive group healing, we will begin the inward journey together that will reveal and awaken the magical alchemist within you. We're going to start each session with Belinda providing a channeled message from her angels and guides, and then she and I will provide deep healing work that will unblock your untapped potential and begin to awaken your awareness of the magical alchemist within you. There are three ways that you can participate in Awaken Your Inner Alchemist. You can watch Belinda and myself live online. You can call in by phone to listen live, or you can even listen to the audio replay at your leisure. And regardless of the option that you choose, all three options are equally beneficial and effective. To learn more and to register for Awaken Your Inner Alchemist, go to my website, intuitivetransformations.net, and it's right there on the top of the homepage, and click on the Awaken Your Inner Alchemist button. So I have an absolutely incredible guest to share with you today. His name is Paul um, Avgerinos, and I know I practiced this name so many times I can't believe I paused. (laughs) Paul Avgerinos, and he is a Grammy-winning artist. He's a composer, a producer, an engineer whose music is broadcast all over the world. Besides his um, over 20 critically acclaimed New Age albums on the Round Sky label, Paul is very active in film and TV music with placements in the Super Bowl, World Cup, the Olympics, and countless other TV shows. He also has been involved in a number of platinum album productions as well. And Paul lives with his lovely wife in Reading, Connecticut, and he also works and owns the stu- works in and owns the studio um, that is called Studio Unicorn, which is also where he lives. It's kind of like what Prince has, <laughs> what Prince had his own uh, studio in his home. But this is a commercial studio that he um, opens up to other artists and he works with them, uh, creating beautiful music. And it's located where. Um, deer pass by his studio windows and hawks and egos give inspiration from above. So it's literally nestled in the heart of nature, which is just beautiful. 
So, Paul, just from reading your bio, my heart really does expand into what is truly possible to create in one's life. Um, thank you so much for joining us on the show. It's it's going to be uh, very exciting to have you share your story and how you created the expansive life that you have now. Well, thank you, Sylvia. It's wonderful to be here with you and to share this time together. Thank you so much. So, Paul, I have to ask you, let's start at the top. When did you first become interested in music? Oh, gosh, that would be back in the uh, very early 70s uh, when I was uh, 11 or so. And uh, it was about about 75, I realized that music had a tremendous spiritual power, that it was actually a spiritual path unto itself, you know, that... uh, Music was meditation and healing and transformation and expansion and revelation and wisdom and all good things available through this queen of the arts, you know, this vibrational art form. So that that really hit me when I was about 15, 16 years old. And uh, it's been an integral part of my spiritual path ever since and really the heart of my work, the heart of my ministry is my music. So very blessed to have that, that dharmic alignment, you know, to, to be aligned with my purpose so clearly from such a young age. It's a, that's a great blessing. And I, uh, I give thanks for it every day and every night. That's a tremendous blessing because at the young age of 15, you had a spiritual awareness. Yeah, it really was uh, remarkable. Uh, I was practicing yoga and trying to learn how to meditate, and I had um, taken on a guru, uh, or the guru had taken me on, rather. <laughs> Sri Chinmoy was the guru of uh, John McLaughlin, Mahavishnu, John McLaughlin, and Carlos Santana. And it's so funny, you know, they say when you're ready, the teacher appears. So here I am growing up in you know, rural uh, backwater Wilton, Connecticut, and um, it turns out that Chi Chin Moy was coming every week to Norwalk, Connecticut, which was about, you know, eight miles away. <laughs> and so and he happened to be the guru of my idol. John McLaughlin was, you know, my, my avatar in music. Uh, he uh, was all great things. I looked up to him so much and he inspired our whole generation. And so his his guru was coming, you know, right to our town <laughs> like every week. So, I mean... How, how how remarkable. <clears throat> it sounds like that was destiny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, he came all the way from Bengal, India and ended up in Queens and then for some reason decided to open a little meditation center in Norwalk, Connecticut, which was, you know, a few miles from where I was growing up. So pretty amazing stuff, really. It's uh, it's just so, so wonderful, the law of how the law of attraction works, you know, when you're, you're, uh, you're looking for something, you, you feel this, this draw, you know, I, I want to study with an Indian guru and well, there he is. He appears in, in, in Connecticut you know, of all places. That is, uh, that's a remarkable story in of itself. I mean, has your life always been a series of remarkable stories such as that or what led you to um, begin, to, I know that you said music, you, you realized at a young age it had a spiritual component, but what really opened your heart to connect with spirituality on such a deep level to even pursue yoga and meditation in a guru? I, I appreciate the value of a guru, I should say. Yes, well, I, I just felt from a very early age, I think from about seven or eight, I become became conscious that there was so much more than I was seeing, you know, so much more than meets the eye and that there was a whole spiritual, unseen spiritual world. And um, maybe it was past life um, impressions or recollections, but it just was very, very strong feeling that there was a lot more going on than was obvious, you know, on a physical level, on a superficial level. And so, you know, by about the age of 14, 15, I started really 
uh, digging deep, you know, and reading every book I could get my hands on and reading Yogananda, Autobiography of a Yogi, and all those great books that were so, so cathartic in that generation. And, um, you know, it's just been, been this constant expansion ever since then. You know, there are times when it seems like not much is going on, or maybe you feel like things are um, just kind of going along in a routine, but there's growth going on in a, in a, a deeper place, you know, a subconscious level, uh, the growth going on unseen, you know, like beneath the soil, the roots are spreading. And, uh, and then you have these moments when it all just bursts forth like the springtime and you have this amazing experience and, you know, you win a Grammy and you have a baby and your whole life just clicks together like a miracle. But it's, you know, it's because I always stay present. I always do my meditation, do my prayers, do my yoga. And I'm always working on staying connected with spirit. That is so critical. And um, I I love how things have just kind of exploded for you this year. And I know we're going to be going into a break in just a moment. But when we come back from the break, I do want to talk about this amazing year you've had in, in 2016, which actually it began in 2015 with your first um, Grammy nomination for Best New Age Album. And and then this year with um, this beautiful album called Grace, which is such a perfect name, that actually was not only nominated, but won the uh, 2016 Grammy Award for the Best New Age Album. Um And there is our music. When we return, everyone, we're going to continue this conversation with Paul Aver. Why am I butchering your name today, Paul? I can't believe this. This is a weird day for me. It's a hard hard (laughs) day. But I've said it correctly a thousand times. Avgerinos. That's it. it. Avgerinos. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you. We'll be back in just a moment, everyone. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Do you want to be a better communicator? Do you want to better connect with the important people in your life? Do you want to enrich your relationships? If so, join me, Matthew Cooper, on the Positive Control System Show every Wednesday evening at 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Ohm Times Radio. I'll meet you there. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Hailing the Light, on Ohm Times Radio every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Healing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. The number one reason girls drop out of school in Sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Sylvia Henderson with my special guest, Paul Abgerinos, and he is a Grammy Award winning artist. His album Grace won the 2016 Best New Age Album Award at the Grammys this year. And he's been sharing with us about his spiritual practice, which I think is just so beautiful and powerful to hear that people in the music industry are so dedicated to their spiritual work and their spiritual walk. And um, and I'm just very excited to continue this conversation because he has a remarkable story that we're going to get into a little bit further into the show. But before we do, Paul, I have to ask you, it it, it does sound like you have brought in some very positive karma from some past lives. Um, And things have just really unfolded very beautifully. I mean, of course, not overnight. This has been over a very long course period of time. Um, But yet you've had two Grammy nominations, one Grammy Award. Um, You have your own recording studio, Studio Unicorn, that's in Surrounded by Nature, where you live and work. And you produced a wide variety of music for film, TV commercials, and um, albums of all different kinds of, uh, out of different kinds of musical genres. And, And you now have this you have a lovely family, a lovely wife, a brand new baby girl. And, um, you know, I know we touched on this just kind of, um, lightly, but really have you just kind of thought, looked back on this and said, wow, this is really pretty surreal that I'm living this amazing life of my dreams. I do. I do every day. Uh, my whole life is a constant prayer of gratitude and uh, I'm constantly chanting my guru mantra and, you know, giving thanks for this remarkable opportunity to, to serve in this way uh, with music and to help uh, a little, to help to ease a little of the pain and difficulty in this world. And, uh, you know, as my Guru Amma says, you know, if you're able to, to love and serve in, in some real solid capacity, it's such a blessing, you know, and, and it's such an honor to be able to, to serve and love. And, um, you know, it's so true that the, 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 uh, that it really is better to give than to receive. And, uh, it's just amazing that when you open your heart up and you you you're authentic, you know, you just just share your heart's truth in a in a natural, easy, authentic way. People respond to it, you know, and they their hearts soften and open, and it's just so beautiful to, to be part of that, you know, and to be part of the healing of the world is. Uh, I can't really think of anything more wonderful to do with a lifetime, you know, that's, uh, I agree as we heal, we, you know, we're all one. And so coming from that place of we're healing the world, we're healing ourselves at the same time. So that's a, a wonderful, um, wonderful point of view and a wonderful attitude to have. And, and that comes through in your music because your music is very transcendent. It's very healing. It's, it's really beautiful what you've. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting that many of us uh, that do this work, uh, I think in, in even many different modalities, we, we often start out, you know, trying to heal ourselves. Like we have, you know, maybe some difficulty in, in childhood uh, and, we start to find a way to heal ourselves. And then we realize that we've tapped into something archetypal, you know, something much bigger than just our issues or our own personal problems or concerns. But we found something archetypal and large and iconic that can serve everyone, you know, that, that oneness, you know, where you see, well, wow, if I'm experiencing this difficulty, then someone else is experiencing it. And if this helps me, it's going to help them. And so a lot of us, especially in music, I think in healers too, you know, that they, you know, they heal themselves and, and then and 
reach out to others. And but definitely in music, I've seen it a lot with many of my colleagues. You know that we we start out trying to figure out our own inner <laughs> world. You know, like mm-hmm. what's going on in there, and you know why why is this working and this isn't working, and uh, and it's great when you finally you know, you're making albums for other people. I mean, not, I, mean I enjoy them, of course, but, you know, you're thinking of, of, of the other. You're thinking of the, 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 the other uh, people in this world and, you know, how can I help them? How can I serve them with the music? And that's, uh, that's a wonderful place to be at. It's, it's, a, it's a higher level of, of awareness there. It definitely is. And it's coming, you know, I can feel the authenticity coming from your heart as you speak about this. This is really, um, a, it's, it's, a, it's a joyful labor of love that you do. Yes, it's, it's, it sure is. It's just amazing. Uh, you know, when you work, uh, oh, it took about a thousand hours to make the Grace album, you know. And, you know, there's there's some times in there where you're, kind of in the trenches, you know, and you're like, well, I hope this is good. <laughs> you know, I hope I'm making good decisions here artistically, technically, you know, and uh, there's a lot of trust, a lot of faith going on there when you're, you know, a thousand hours making one album. So, uh, but then, you know, when it starts to really come together and it's working and, 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 and the magic is, is happening, it's such a beautiful feeling, you know, you, you just, uh, you get goosebumps sometimes. You're like, wow, this is really, uh, this is really coming together. So. Well, what I, what I love, Paul, though, is that I heard that the inspiration for this beautiful album was your guru, Ama. Oh, very much so. Yes. Well, her grace is unfathomable. And of course we're talking about Ama, the hugging saint, this uh, miraculous being from South India who has personally hugged close to 40 million people already. And uh, she's not done yet. She's 62 now and going strong. She'll be in the U S in a matter of days now. And, um, you know, what a remarkable being on her, at her 60th birthday party, which they gave for her in South India, 500,000 people came, you know, give or take a few thousand. Wow. And, and she hugged each one of them over four days, you know, 500,000 people. Can you imagine, you know, this is, this is beyond a human capacity. She is. Uh, she's um, the real deal. She's the real deal. I mean, this is Jesus come back to earth. The sure ministry is so Christ-like. It is just. Everything she says and does is exactly what Christ said and did, except times 10,000, because, you know, the Shakti around her is massive, the goddess energy around her. And she's, you know, she's reigniting the balance back to the feminine, the divine feminine, which our world needs so desperately, you know, because we've sung, we've swung way too far towards the masculine and, we need, we desperately need this goddess consciousness, the gentleness, the caring, the motherly affection and love, you know, caring for nature, caring for children, caring for the uh, impoverished, for the suffering, for the sick, for the ones that don't have anything. And this, this is critically what the world needs the most is this goddess feminine, divine feminine leadership and focus and energy and she is she's the holy mother she is manifesting this in a massive way and uh of it's a I wave can't. of compassion that she provides oh, it's amazing it it's just um, it's unfathomable and it, it's just so beautiful and i can't wait to tell our our own, you know, every devotee has uh, several magical Ama stories, and I already have a few, <laughs> and I've only been officially uh, this devotee for uh, a year. And actually really? Only a year. Yeah, actually, <laughs> only a year and a few months. I mean, it was February. Of, it was after the first, the Grammy nomination of last year. Uh, should I tell this story now? Please, yes. Go sure. right ahead. Yeah, so... Uh, 
Last year, I was nominated for uh, Bhakti, Best New Age Album. And so right after the Grammy Awards, my wife Jen and I, we flew to South India to officially become devotees of Amma. Amma received us with open arms and initiated us with mantras. And that was just remarkable. Uh, looking into her eyes, it's like looking into infinity. It's just it's just completely remarkable. I wrote a song about it. It's on my new album. I looked into your eyes and saw the universe. Mm. And that's, uh, it's not really a metaphor. <laughs> so, I agree. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <clears throat> let's see. Well, I don't know. We can't get the whole story in before the break, but I'll, I could begin it in that um, on the, uh, February 20th, Amma gave us, uh, right after we got our mantras, uh, she gave us her blessing for us to have a baby. And so in May, after years of trying, we got pregnant, and Jen's due date was February 20th of this year. And then our daughter was born on a few days after that, on February 27th, 12 days after I won the Grammy, on February 27th. And the 27th is the exact day of the month that Amma herself is born on, was born on. She was born on September 27th, and our daughter was born on February 27th. So there's some remarkable giant breadcrumbs there for people that are paying attention to see that Amma has, she has the power, the Shakti power of the goddess to be able to alter the physical reality. She can remove tumors. She can give babies where there are no babies. She can do amazing things in the world, and uh, she does them every day. She does, and it's really quite amazing. Um, if you happen to live in an area where Amma is going to be, I encourage you to you know, even if it's going to a 50 mile drive, make it there because it's really, there's nothing like it. I mean, when she walks into the room, the energy shifts and she will literally sit there and hug one person after the other. She doesn't get up for bathroom break. She doesn't eat. She just sits there and yeah, she holds this space. Right. And it's just remarkable. So if you go to amma.org, A-M-M-A dot org, and then you can look under, under Meeting Amma, you'll see the North American tours, 10 cities from June 4th and ending in Toronto, July 14th. And uh, I encourage you to go and see her if you have if never experienced the, the miracle that is Amma. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Alaya, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. Hi, this is Sylvia Henderson, Intuitive Life Coach and Energy Healer. Are you ready to elevate and rise way above your normal? Be sure to listen to my show, Intuitive Transformations, on Own Times Radio, Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern. Get the inspiration you need to transform your life. Join Elliot Jolish, the business therapist, each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jolish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers live on air every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jolish Hour. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Intuitive Transformations, and I have with me my special guest, Paul Abgerinos, and he is a Grammy Award-winning 
uh, musical artist, won the award for Best New Age Album called Grace. And before we went to the break, uh, Paul was sharing an amazing story about his um, his connection with Ama and how he and his wife had gone to South India to South uh, to become devotees, and she blessed them with a blessing for a new baby. And they, after years of trying, actually conceived and had that child on Amma's exact birthday, which is pretty remarkable. And before we went into the break, um, Paul did mention that uh, Amma's um, tour, her Northwest tour, I'm sorry, North American tour starts on June 4th. And it's actually going to start in my neck of the woods. Um, I'm in the Seattle area. It's going to be in Everett, uh, Washington, which is not too far from where I live. I'm going to be there. I've been going to see Ama and getting my hugs for the last four years. And I tell you, it's like something that you have to experience because no one can really explain to you what you're going to experience. You have to experience it yourself. And people fly in from all over to the Seattle, Washington area, from Canada, from other parts of the country, because to be in her presence, to receive that blessing and that hug is it's quite amazing. And then she also has other programs and, and teachings and meditations. And it's just a really lovely, beautiful experience. You have chantings. It's, it's just really something special. So, and, and Paul told me today that he is actually going to be singing on the tour. Yes. It's so wonderful. Uh, I've uh, finished a new album uh, for Amma, you know, which is called Amma and uh, it's devotional songs to the Divine Mother, and it's coming out July 15th, and I'm donating tons of copies to the AMA bookstores. There are these wonderful gift shops set up at all the uh, tour stops all around the world where you can buy, you know, beautiful clothes and and recordings and all kinds of, of, uh, of devotional um materials and one all of her fantastic books and all and so i'm donating uh, tons of copies uh to to amas embracing the world so you know to help raise money for her awesome charities where she does just fantastic charity work she's building a whole new hospital in delhi right now there's a whole hospital that she built in south india Sixty thousand homes for tsunami refugees and orphanages and it's just you know massive uh she's like this un unto herself you know it's just amazing the charity work that well, we all do together you know all the devotees hundreds of thousands of devotees actually millions at this point around the world, all chipping in as we're able to help, you know, to help the charity work. So it's really exciting. Uh, I don't think I can do the whole tour with the baby and everything. I really want to, but um, I'm sure Amma will, will have me do exactly what I'm supposed to do, you know, maybe the second half of the tour, the eastern side. Um, but... Um, it's it's going to be so amazing to sing for her. I, I can't, you know, I can't just tell you how awesome that is. Yes, <laughs> I I'm mean, sure. a year What ago, an honor. <laughs> yeah, a year ago, I couldn't imagine that, you know, I would be singing for her. I Just to, just to kneel near her, like somewhere, you know, mm-hmm. like 20 feet away from her was just so awesome. But now I'm going to get to sing for her, which <laughs> is, you know... Now, this is the kind of things that happen around Amma. This is yeah. what I'm trying to say. Well, this has been you a know, pinnacle year for thought, you, too. This has been an yeah. amazing year. <laughs> yeah. Well, I never thought I would even get a Grammy nomination. When right. I started out in New Age, honestly, Sylvia, I, I, I never thought I would even get ever get a nomination. But so and next thing I know, with Amma's Grace, I didn't, I'm not just getting nominated. I'm winning the Grammy. So it's like, you know, she's she's got me... You know, expanding and, and, and imagining things that I couldn't even conceive of before, you know, and that's just so, so remarkable. Uh, I'm imagining, I'm seeing a, a level of, of spiritual growth and happiness and evolution that I just, I didn't even think that was even possible for a human being, you know, so that's... <laughs> that's so that's, beautiful, Paul. That is just so beautiful. Well, it's all due to her grace. It really is. 
And exactly what you said, it's so magical around her. I mean, as you get near her presence, or even a half a mile away, you'll start to feel, well, there's something going on here, very special. And then as you get closer, it gets more and more intense. And the, the just the palpable love, pure love that's around her, in, in, present in all the devotees and present in the in the air and in the food. And, and, and it's just so powerful. It is. And it really is. Um, it's like one heart beating as one yeah. to me. And the room, the in, like you said, the room is electric. Everything oh, about yeah. it is, is amazing. You get like 5,000 people all chanting bhajans and kirtan. Mm -hmm. It's just a remarkable thing. In, in India, it's like, it's just crazy, you know, because you could have like 50,000 people chanting with her, you know, it's, it's like, the coolest rock concert ever because it's a spiritual rock concert. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. That, Cause that, I just, I can't even imagine what it would be like in India. I mean, I'm sure oh, it's something else. Yeah. Indescribable, indescribable. Yeah, it really is. She's just amazing that the, the Shakti flowing through her divine love and goddess presence and, and, you know, there's many names for it. Call it God, call it goddess, call it perfection, uh, universal oneness. Um, it's all there, you know. <laughs> it's, I yeah. love it. Yeah. So I was wondering, Paul, do you have any practical words of wisdom that you could share with those who are listening that would encourage them to continue to pursue their dreams. I mean, for, for many, it's not quite as synchronistic, um, you know, um, from as, as it's been with you uh, in your life and how you've been so divinely led, so divinely guided and every step of the way spirit has just expanded more and more and brought more into your life. And even with this, um, which I thought you had been following Alma for quite a while. It, it wasn't really quite less than two years now. Yeah. And and for another big step and leap in your life. And how is it just about, It's it's it has to transcend just the spiritual practice because many people are doing spiritual practices and they're not, their lives are good, their lives are, you know, calm, they're peaceful, but it's this expansiveness that you have going on right now in your energy field and in your life that um, would encourage people. I mean, what can you share that would really encourage people if they're thinking, oh, gosh, is it going to ever happen for me? Because winning a Grammy was a dream of yours. Yeah, it, that's a beautiful question. And I do have a strong uh, feeling about that, that I think it's critical that each soul, each being, you have to ask yourself on a very deep level, what, what is truly your heart's desire? You know, what, what is really important to you? You know, when you take away all the layers of, you know, your parents and your friends and your relatives and your, you know, your situation, your story, you know, where is your heart really vibrating with the most joy? You know, what, what gives you joy, true joy? What gives you bliss, you know? And find out what that is and then follow it complete with complete faith and devotion and completely surrender to it, you know? And, and it's, it's not easy to do because, you know, that might mean being poor, you know, it might mean having no job, it might mean following a guru around the world in a bus, you know, it might mean making a lot of money, which you might not be comfortable with, who knows what it means, but it, it's, it's inside each of us, you know, is this inner wisdom, this, this guidance. And I remember so clearly when I was about 17, I was typical depressed lost teenager in a lot of ways you know shy introverted i mean it was like such a typical musician type and i remember clearly one day i was just kind of really dragging along and i said i said to god i said you know god i don't really care what i do in music but i just feel like i need to be in music or i can die and i don't really care which one it is, you decide, you're God, I don't know anything, I'm ignorant, 
So you decide. And if it's music, I'm going to just surrender to it. Whatever you put in front of me, I'm going to accept it. You know, you say, you go play in a jazz band. Okay, I'll do it. Go play classical music. Okay. Um, teach that fellow how to play the guitar. Okay, whatever it is, I'm going to do it without any expectation like, oh, you know, I want to be a rock star. I want to be whatever. So fortunately, um, God said, yeah, okay, you're going to do music. <laughs> and he started opening doors, you know, little little doors at first, very, very little doors started opening and things started clicking together. But the point is, is that I had a complete surrender to it. I, I was completely surrendered to whatever God wanted for me. If he wanted me, I was very depressed. I said, if you want me to die, I'm happy to die. If you want me to do music, I would love to do music. But it, thy will be done. Thy will be done. That's been my prayer you know, that's a very powerful prayer, you know, because it gets our ego out of the way and 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 aligns us with great gigantic forces which have tremendous power. We don't have really any power ourselves, but when we align ourselves with the divine, all kinds of cool things happen. So I think that's where it all starts. That's what Amma is always saying. She says, you know, just... Just love and serve with an open heart and surrender, surrender to, to the goodness in yourself and, and, and let, let God guide you, you know, through, through the world. You know, I, I think that's the holiest prayer that you can possibly pray in your life is yeah. the prayer of surrender. And quite often people get a little confused about the difference between surrender and giving up. Right, right. Oh, that's beautiful, Sylvia. Very, very beautiful. Exactly. It's not at all giving up, but it's a true humility, mm -hmm. a true humility where you say, I am not wisdom. I am not Sophia. I am not the Holy Mother of the Lord Jesus. I'm just a little, you know, I'm a beautiful little spark, but I don't have that complete mind of God. And so there's a humility in us that, you know, we really, really surrender and, and, and say, thy will be done, thy will be done. And, and, and then, then the wonder, the magic can happen then, you know, because there's no resistance, there's nothing blocking it. Right. I love that, Paul. When we return after the break, more of Paul Abgerinos. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment. Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Matt Connerton here. Join Jen Coffee and I twice a week for Matt Connerton Unleashed, a political talk show that's a little different than what you're used to. No liberal or conservative agenda here, just an honest dialogue about truth and how things really work in the world of politics. Matt Connerton Unleashed, every Tuesday and Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. Hi everyone, this is Shay Parker, the host of Best of the Best, which airs live right here on IOM Radio every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm super excited to bring you expert guest hosts, spiritual discussions, free psychic readings, and so much more. I can promise that you will not want to miss this one-of-a-kind, fun, yet touching, down-to-earth show. Join us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on OTRFM. This is Shay Parker, and I can't wait to see you there. Hello, I'm Miriam Knight of New Consciousness Review, inviting you to my new show where I interview the rising stars of the Conscious Awakening. We'll explore the many faces of consciousness and action and intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us each Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on the Rising Stars Show. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. 
The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. knows who is a Grammy award winning artist was offering really some wonderful practical words of wisdom about how to um, expand your life and how to really move into your dreams and, and have them actualized in it. And the bottom line is it's really all about surrender and, um, it seems counterintuitive because we're taught to power through and make it happen and so much efforting, but there's so much bliss and peace in the act of surrender. Um, so, Paul, one more question I have for you, sir. Yeah. Why do you think man created music? Oh, well, I don't think man created music. Well, but do you uh, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why do we turn to music so, so much? Well, because we are vibrational beings. Our true nature is pure consciousness, pure awareness, pure bliss, pure love, infinite, eternal, and perfect. That's who we really are. We're not physical beings. And so music is the queen of the arts, and so important because it is vibrational and it is very much as we are vibrational. And so beautiful music vibrates in harmony with your beautiful vibratory nature. So you feel your pure bliss, your pure consciousness, your pure love that you are when you resonate with the vibration of the music. So the music is activating you and you are activating it and it's a relationship you know it's like a conversation back and forth and music made by humans is beautiful but you have to remember that this whole world of music in the angelic realm which is going on 24 7 mm -hmm. glorifying god the angels are constantly singing and the heavenly realms are constantly rejoicing in pure ecstatic blissful music which is how to put it into words a hundred thousand times more beautiful than the most beautiful human music is the music of the angelic realm and so a lot of us artists have been blessed to have heard that music for a moment here and there. And so we try to, you know, make it, we, we, we want everybody to hear that on earth, you know? And so we try to make music as best as we can with our human bodies and human voices and human skills. And of course we, we fall short, but it's, it's beautiful because it's sincere and it's, it's, um, honest you know and it's it's our our heart's truth is is there you know and that god loves us so much when we sing you know not that we're great singers but that that our hearts are purely rejoicing in love you know when we're really singing and playing with complete surrender we're very beautiful and and very beloved because you know, we're beloved when we're not singing too, of course, but you know, it's just it's just a very high vibrational state for a human being, you know, because you know, we're 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 experiencing that divine realm through through music and, and that's just such a blessed state to be in. It is very um transportive and very transformational. Um I you know, I have a cousin who's a professional jazz pianist and watching him play it's they you go into a different place yeah exactly uh, he's he becomes a channel of something exactly yeah he becomes an instrument you know that's that's what we all strive to do uh true musicians we we we, we just want to be instruments of that beautiful magical energy that flows through us you know and it's such a cool feeling because you can be playing when you really surrender into the moment and then something really beautiful will come 
through your hands and through your body. And, and you're like, well, where did that come from? <laughs> it's like, who played that? <laughs> it's like, you know, I remember times where I, you know, played some amazing chords. I didn't even understand what they were technically, you know, but it just came through my body because I was completely surrendered in the moment as an instrument. And, uh, yeah, you know, that's, and, and, and many people can have that experience. Even if you're strumming a guitar, you know, just a simple chord, if you do it with complete abandon and complete surrender, you can have that transcendent experience. You don't have to be, you know, a great musician or a trained musician, uh, necessarily, you know, you could, you could just sing a chant to Aum, you know, one note, if, but if you do it with complete surrender and complete devotion, it will alter your your life completely. <laughs> it will That's... open up all kinds of doorways to the vibrational realms, you know, healing angels and teachers and spirit guides. They can come in through that portal. You know, once you open that doorway, that vibrational doorway, they can come in and they can help you. They can comfort you, they can bless you, they can teach you, guide you, and then, you know, once you start, it, it never stops. <laughs> it's not like humans, you know, that they say, oh, I'm tired of you, I'm going to, you know, move on to something else, and it's not like that. In God's world, you know, when when you open your heart to God, it's it's forever, you know, when you really surrender, it's forever. And that's, you know, Amma's always talking about that. She's like, you know, don't, don't worry about this world. Focus on the spiritual world. Focus on where real bliss is. That real. is what is real is the spiritual yeah. world. Everything else is the illusion. Exactly. Exactly. It's all going to fade away. It's going to disappear in the blink of an eye. The blink of an eye, it'll all be uh, going on like a dream. Mm-hmm. But the pure love, the pure bliss, the pure light and wisdom, that's the real, that's the real thing, and that's eternal. And so let's align ourselves with what's real and, and enjoy, really enjoy life, you know, not the temporary pleasure. You know, I mean, it's okay to enjoy, uh, enjoy a meal, enjoy human pleasures, but don't get lost in them, you know, don't get lost and attached to it, thinking that, you know, <laughs> that's real long, you know, eternal happiness is in there. It's not. It's going to it's going to blink out in a moment. So, yeah, it's it's really beautiful. Amma is leading me so perfectly, you know, as much as I'm able, she's removing my ego. You know, that was one of my prayers um, before I won the Grammy. I actually had a feeling that I was going to win. And I kept praying every day. I said, Amma, Thank you for letting me win this Grammy, but please help it help to make me less egoic mm-hmm. and help me to become more humble when I mm-hmm. win. You know, use this, use this to take away ego and to make me more expansive and more open to true love and true bliss and the light of God. So and, and she's doing it. You know, that's this remarkable thing. It's so beautiful. Well, Paul, your heart is so full. I mean, I can feel it coming through the airways. It's amazing. And what you've just shared is so powerful and so true and, and from a very pure place. I, I do really appreciate those words of wisdom because, again, going back to it's about the surrender. So many people get caught up in what they have and what they don't have. And that's where the suffering and the struggle gets involved. That's so true. But when you could step away from all of the physicality that we've been, uh, that's been promoted by the media that we have to have in order to have a happy life. uh, Because what you find is when you have those things, it does not bring happiness. Maybe a momentary joy of, oh, I have a brand new car. But the first ding you get in the side of the car, now you just have a car. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alma has a great story about wealthy people uh, that they can't sleep in their perfect mansions, their million-dollar mansions, so they have to take medicines at night so that they can rest because they have no peace inside of their heart, no peace inside of their mind. They have every possible you know, comfort of life, 
but they don't have any peace. <laughs> so they have to take medicines at night so that they can sleep, you know. But she says, isn't that ironic, you know, because they work so hard to get all these things, but it doesn't bring them any real peace and joy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, you know, she has lots of stories like that. Of she course. does. She does. And and that's so true. And that's pretty much why we're having such a huge problem in our country today is because we've forgotten that we're spirit first. Exactly. Exactly. There's nothing wrong with um, uh, technology and comforts of life. And, and, and it's all wonderful. As long as you put the spirit and the heart first, then everything will fall perfectly into place. But when you put it backwards, that's when all the trouble comes. That's why we have so much trouble in the world, because people are putting the physical in front of the spirit. They're forgetting, ignoring the spirit and focusing on the physical. And then they're all disappointed and angry because it's not working. So it's really simple. Just put the heart first, <laughs> put love first. Mm -hmm. And everything else will fall into place. You know, you won't have to fight with your brother and your sister. You won't have to go to war and all these horrible things. If you just put love and light and compassion, peace, yeah, put it first in your life. You know, let the heart guide the mind, not the ego and the mind guiding the, the heart and the body, but let the heart guide. Is this the right thing to say, the right thing to do? Is it loving? Is it kind? Is it helpful? And and then, oh, your life just blossoms, you know, and, and, and that's how we're going to heal the world is, you know, once most of us uh, behave that way, the whole world will be so much more It will peaceful change everything. And, yeah, it will change everything, it exactly. Will. Yeah. Well, Paul Abgerinos, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. You are an amazing person. And I'm so grateful that there are people like you on the planet today. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Sylvia. You're a sweetheart and very grateful for all the wonderful work that you are doing. And it, it's all so, so beneficial and so helpful. And we're, we're changing the world together, one person at a time. We sure are. Thank you and goodbye.